by the data, home prices uh, just continue rising. Why are you then seeing to trim exposure to uh, China property developers? Hi, Martin. Yeah, uh, if you look at the June data, it actually looks quite uh, fantastic. Actually, we observed a renewed round of like a home owning mania in China because uh, in April and May there was a round of like a new uh, pre-sale permits being granted to a few of the high-end projects that created a sense of urgency among home buyers. Because if you look at the housing price in China, secondary market in many cases are selling at higher price than primary market. So people feel like, well, it's uh, quite a quick way to make money by owning a property. But I think for developers, the story are a bit different. If you look at the sales growth and momentum, some developers are still reporting like a 30, 40% year-on-year growth. But on the other hand side, if you look at the balance sheet, it actually ballooned by like 100%, which means 50% of sales growth actually is not fast enough. That's why I think for this year, for the sector, actually the key focus shouldn't really be like housing price growth, but on the uh, credit side and the cash flow side instead. That's why we feel ah. like uh, we shouldn't look at the, the sales growth uh, momentum only. Okay. Okay, so the focus you think should be on the uh, sh uh, should be on the uh, on credit growth and also uh, cash flow. So let's talk about that. I mean, one of the th one of the things the government has done recently to try and uh, cool things out in the local and the Chinese property market is to tell developers, look, relax. Uh, you don't have to worry so much about selling all these units that you're building. Uh, why don't you rent them out to people instead? Which kind of makes sense because there's uh, even with rentals, there's a big upfront payment involved. I understand that, so good for cash flow. But the problem is the rental market in China, as you well know, is very soft. I think average yields are about one and a half percent, when cost of uh, funding is probably six, seven percent. Which means these guys are looking at negative carry or negative yield of about eight and a half percent. How are Chinese developers going <laughs> to? I mean, what's business going to be like for them going forward if those are the numbers? Loy, uh, I think uh, Chinese homebuyers really not care too much about the, the rental yield. It's not like uh, in a mature market, the, the, the market basically is quite stable and home price does not move. But if you look at like in past 10 years, housing price actually in some of the cities doubled or tripled or even quadrupled. Uh, which means actually compared to the capital value appreciation, the, the yield is a kind of negligible part uh, in the past, of course, because your, 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 your wage, your, your GDP, et cetera, are growing close to, to 10%. Uh, that's the mentality. I think obviously people still hope, or at least uh, I think for those buying now, still think this story or investment thesis could still be valid in the next five, six, seven years. Yes, uh, in tier one cities, I think the yield currently is probably 1.5%. It was like a two, three percent, but the after housing price jump, uh, jumped by 100% over the last one, two years. The yield is like 1.5%. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.